This week on Hands-On Photography, we're gonna do part two of our selective adjustments with your photography. We're gonna take a look at a little bit of your feedback and I'm going to challenge you. Stay tuned. Hands-On Photography is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass easily creates unique passwords for every site. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This is Twit. This episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by Hover. Use a domain name that truly represents you and your passion. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. Hey folks, I'm Ant Pruitt. This is Hands-On Photography here at twit.tv in the beautiful Last Pass Studios. Hope y'all are doing well. Unbelievable as always. And I'm totally, totally happy to be back here sharing more tips and tricks with you folks regarding photography. Whether you're trying to use your smartphone or DSLR or the big fancy red camera, doesn't matter. We talk about all the different tips that you can use to make those images look a lot better. Even dive into doing a little bit of post processing. Now, before we get started, I want to take care of a little bit of business. So, if you got your browser open right now, type in twit.to slash survey20 and go ahead and complete our, our annual listener survey. This is going to allow us to, to totally figure out exactly what you folks as loyal listeners are looking for um, from the Twit content. And, you know, maybe it'll help us develop some other new shows. Who knows? But we just want to get a little bit of feedback from you just to see how we're doing and, and trying to gauge what you're looking for as a wonderful audience. Doesn't take any, any time to complete. It's just a few minutes of your time. No tracking, no emails, none of that. So just hop on over to twit.to slash survey20 and handle that for me please and thank you. Also, if this is your first time joining this podcast, thank you, welcome. Go ahead and hit subscribe in your favorite podcatcher of choice, whether it's Apple Podcasts or, or Stitcher or, or Overcast, whatever. Just hit subscribe in there. And once you have done that, go ahead and hit the share option so other people can find out more about hands-on photography. That is twit.tv slash hop if you need a little easy URL to point people to. So go ahead and do the, do the little subscribing option, do the sharing option. And if you have any rating systems and comments and things that you want to leave, do that too, if your app supports that. I truly appreciate that. All right, so now, business is out of the way. Let's go ahead and get started with this week's show. Uh, I want to do, first off, a little bit of feedback from you folks. I tend to ask you to send me your emails at hop at twit.tv. And if you want to send some pictures or ask some questions and things like that, I'm totally fine with that. And I try to answer as many of them as I can. Uh, I got a couple of pictures here that I wanted to go over. Uh, got them sitting over here inside of Lightroom. So let me go ahead and fire up the first image here. This one comes from Mr. Chris Whittle. And it's a beautiful sunset that he took a couple years ago, I believe is what he told me. Yep, 2017, according to this metadata here. And I'm looking at this image and I can go about it a couple different ways. Uh, first off, very nice, uh, nicely done, good, beautiful image. But it depends on how you want to present this shot. Because what I, I first noticed, there's a little bit of haze in this, but Sometimes haze works for an image, you know? You don't always have to just, just clear out the fog or clear out the smoke because sometimes that haze gives you a little bit of atmosphere and gives you a little bit of mood. So if I was to hop in here in, in Lightroom and just hit this little dehaze option right here, it's gonna change the look of it and it may not change it for the better or it may work okay. So right there, that seems to be okay. It gives it a little more contrast, a little more contrast. Not bad. And I got to do my nitpick. You guys know what I'm going to talk about. It's that horizon line. It's just off a touch. And the hard part about shooting cityscapes like this here, where you have these tall skyscrapers, your eye tends to try to line up the buildings and get them as straight as possible. Nope. Don't do that. Look at your horizon line. See, if I undo this, you'll see a difference there. Like, I'm sure he was looking at this building right here because it's a pretty strong focal point. And at a first glance, it does look fairly straight. But if you just look back here, 
at that horizon line. Notice that horizon line starts to tilt down just a little bit on the right hand side. So use that as your guideline. And I'm going to go ahead and just rotate it ever so slightly. OK, so now, according to this guide, my horizon line is straight, but also look at the building. Whoops, don't do that. Ant. <laughs> also, look at the building. Now the building is even straighter, you know, so go ahead and hit enter on the keyboard. Much better composition there. Cleaner shot, even with a little bit of dehaze on it. And the dehaze really wasn't necessary. Now, I, I previously mentioned sometimes the haze works just fine. So if you want to add more haze, you just go the other way on that slider and see what it does for you. And see, now that gives us a, more of a sunrise look instead of a sunset look just from moving that slider around. So when you're in post process and play around with all of the different settings and, you know, see what kind of look you can come up with, because you may surprise yourself and pull out a shot that you really didn't think about when you click that shutter, you know, so just take a few minutes and play around with the composition and have a little fun with it. And a shout out to Mr. Whittle. You can follow him on Instagram at CJ Whittle. That's CJ Whittle. I'll put a link to it in the show notes once this goes out. Cool. So now we'll look at one more image from another listener or viewer, I should say. This one comes from Mr. Vincent Knight. Mr. Vincent did not take this photograph. Uh, this is a photograph of him right here because he has a magnificent pooch that loves to go out and catch frisbees and jump around and have a good time and just brings a lot of joy. Totally salute you on this, my, my man. Um, but I asked him if I could share this image and use it as a teachable moment because um, there's a little bit of a problem here. I love the, the idea of this composition. So let me go back to it and we'll just crop it down just a touch. Straighten out the horizon just a little bit. See, the horizon was just barely off, wasn't too bad. So now close that. And this looks pretty good. But the very first thing that I noticed when I looked at this image, it wasn't Mr. Vincent. It wasn't the dog. It wasn't even the baby. It was this windmill thingy right here coming right out of the little baby's head. And I'm pretty sure humans can't grow these windmills out of their head. So when you're <laughs> antlers. Oh, OK. Well, I don't think humans grow antlers either, Mr. <laughs> Victor. So <laughs> nice try. But that's another thing when, you, when you're when you're going out and, you know, trying to frame up your shots, you have to be mindful of the surroundings and, and, and everything that's in the frame. And sometimes you can't avoid it. You can't necessarily walk over to that windmill and just pick it up and move it. But fortunately, you can work with it inside of post processing and try to get rid of it. I won't particularly go through a whole removal here inside of Lightroom, but I just wanted to point out that things like that could be really distracting and just push this down and do like this. Get rid of those tiny little artifacts. I've said on a previous episode that Lightroom isn't the ideal app to do like object removal. You'll do some very, very small spot removal. But that right there looks 200 percent better. The baby doesn't have something growing out of its head anymore. The dog looks happy. Mr. Vincent looks happy. Beautiful shot. I'm not going to do any more touch up on it. I could probably sharpen it up a little bit, but I'm just going to leave it alone. I think this is a, a good enough to go for a good old Instagram or something. So, Mr. Vincent, thank you for allowing me to share that image. And um, hopefully everybody that was watching this was able to get a little bit uh, from your shot from a teachable moment standpoint, if you will. All right. Now, two more things before we actually get into this week's uh, lesson, if you will. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of a, a challenge here now. If you've been following me on Instagram and on Twitter, I tend to tell you that, heck, I actually said it on the very first episode of Hop. Photography is not about megapixels. It's not about the, the, the big fancy lens. It's not about the big fancy camera. It's about the story. And I want to challenge you all that are listening this week um, to a little bit of a photo challenge. And no, I'm not saying you're going to win any prizes or anything like that, but this is just a challenge 
for you to, you know, s sort of help sharpen up your skills a little bit and push others within the uh, photography community. And this time we're going to do what I call a one word challenge. Just one word. If you were to grab your camera and I say, um, I need you to snap a picture of love, what would you shoot? Okay. But I'm not going to make it that easy because anybody can go out and capture love in a photograph. That's too easy. I'm going to push you a little bit. This time, I want you to go out there and capture, you know what, actually, Victor, do you have a word? Random. It could be anything. Anything off the top of your head. <laughs> I you put me on the spot, man. No, it's okay. <laughs> well, that's that's the whole point of it. It's just I want I want it to be totally random, and right. it's going to force you to think. Gravel, gravel. Now that's a tough one. Hmm. I'm not going to do them like that though. That's too tough. <laughs> that could have multiple meanings, yeah. though, right? Yeah. We we want to be able to pull a story out of it. So, all right, we're not going to do love. We're not going to do gravel. <laughs> we're going to do curious how about that Ooh, that's a good one curious so this week i'm going to challenge you here on hands-on photography go out grab your camera smartphone whatever it is and i want you to take a photograph of curious whatever it is and send it to me shoot it over to hop at twit.tv or if you're on instagram tag me on instagram and and share it with me there i'm um, ant underscore pruitt on instagram I want to see what you all come up with. Just a little bit of a challenge for you, just to, you know, stir up a little bit of creative juices, you know? So one word challenge, curious, go. All right. And according to the chat room, they have a few suggestions, uh, which you could be curious about bacon or you could. volcanoes, right? So You can be curious about it, but I want to see how can you depict being curious <laughs> about a volcano. Hmm. Our chat room, man, I love y'all. Y'all are so clever. Sometimes you're too clever for your own good. <laughs> All right, so that side of the way, we're going to do a quick um, review, and then we're going to take a, a short little break to thank one of our sponsors. So, Mr. Victor, let's show my laptop again here. Uh, on the previous episode of Hands-On Photography, we talked about selective adjustments inside of Lightroom, and I wanted to pull up another image that we didn't use last week just to sort of help illustrate this. So let's go down and we took a look at, um, say, saturation right here on the screen. Saturation is what's going to boost the colors in your images. So this one is an actual global saturation. And if I pushed it up, it's going to push everything and make it a little bit more punchy from a color standpoint. Don't want to do that in particular. Let's say your project or your client requires that you boost the purple and the magentas in this image a little bit more. So if I were to try to go ahead and hit this hue saturation uh, and luminance panel here in Lightroom, I can go directly to the purple and just push it up like so. And it starts to increase the saturation of the purple hue inside of the uh, image. And I can do the same thing for the magenta. You know, fairly easy, right? But you notice if I took it away, you get a whole different image. Selective adjustments. Okay? Not too bad, right? And the thing is, when you have certain images like this, this uh, gentleman at the concert, you're going to have challenges because of the way things are lit. That concert stage not only had its regular uh, white lighting on it, but it had colorful lights on there. So if there were some colors that was in the same range that you tried to adjust from the lighting standpoint, all of that was going to be affected. So you have to, you know, just sort of take into effect the whole frame and figure out exactly what you want to adjust. Now, when I adjusted ma the magenta on this, let's take a look at the gentleman right back here and watch what happens. <laughs> Even his face starts to change colors just ever so slightly. If I zoom in, you can see his face a little bit more. And we didn't really need his face to be all purpley and magenta-like, so we're going to just push that back just a little bit, make it look a little bit better. 
But again, selective adjustments inside of Lightroom are a great tool and a great way to enhance your images and just pull out certain little details that can help tell the story within your shot. Or it can totally change it and present a whole different story, a whole different mood, if you will. Sometimes you can use color to change the mood of that scene. You know, this is a man in a concert with a lot of positive energy, but if it was sort of a somber scene or whatever, you could change the colors around his atmosphere to present more of a, a somber and soft tone scene. Again, play around with it. You have plenty of time inside of your photo editor of choice, but here in Lightroom, you got all of these different panels for HSL secondaries, and it gives you a lot of power to just have some fun with it. All right, so now we're gonna take a quick break and thank this week's sponsor of Hands On Photography. This episode of Hands On Photography is brought to you by Hover. Hover is a jumping off point for many entrepreneurs and they want you to start your business with a domain name that truly showcases who you are. There are over 300 domain name extensions to choose from and no matter what you want to build, there's a domain name waiting for it. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. That's hover.com slash twit. Okay, so now last week, we did Lightroom. This week, we're gonna do these selective adjustments inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to pull up that same image again. Actually, I wanna bring in another image now that I think about it. I'm sorry, Mr. Victor, I'm just going all off the script. Please, <laughs> please don't be upset with me. Let, me. let me import one more image here. I just had an idea that I think will be, this is a model from CES at the Canon booth. I'm just gonna do a quick touch up real quick. That's not like what I wanted, Lightroom. Sometimes the AI helps, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, that's fair enough right there. That's a little bit better. Okay, so now I wanna take this image into Photoshop and do selective adjustments there. And we could play around with maybe the, uh, the color of her outfit, but a lot of times when you're in Photoshop, you're gonna, hear about different adjustments to things like the hair color or to the eyes and eyes are really really popular so i'm going to zoom in it's like so and i'm going to make a brand new layer right here on the right hand side i'll just click this little plus symbol to make a brand new layer because now we're going to be working non-destructively so whatever i do that's on this layer for example if i just had an accidental paintbrush or something like that. That's all that's being affected. The, the original image is still there and safe from all of my mistakes. So I'm just gonna undo that. But what if we wanted to just make a subtle adjustment to her eyes? There's a couple ways to do it. We can grab our lasso tool and our trusty Wacom tablet. You can hit L on your keyboard to activate the lasso tool and then just zoom in on it where you get a little closer get a better feel and just draw a selection on what you want to adjust, just like that. Now this is a very, very rough selection. There's a couple other tools inside, but we won't get into it. So now all we have is the selection around the eye, like so, or better yet, let's just duplicate it. That's what we'll do, just to be safe, duplicate it. So now we'll take it away. All we see is the actual eye iris colored in right there. Perfect. Get rid of this layer and do our hue saturation adjustment layer. And if I were to change the saturation, it's gonna change it for the whole image. We don't wanna do it for the whole image. We only wanna do it for the eye, okay? So we'll click on this little icon that's called a clipping mask so that way, it will only adjust what's marked as layer two down here in the bottom right hand corner. So let's zoom in a little bit so we can get a closer look at the eye. And as I move this down in the saturation, it's gonna take the color out of her eye just so slightly. Okay, and if I want to change the color, it's moving more, you see how it's turning a little more green make it darker like that, which we don't want. Just find a little happy balance, depending on whatever your project is asking for. 
See? So now if we zoom out, she looks like she has one contact on. <laughs> one that's green and one that's uh, her regular eye. Sometimes people want that. Totally up to your project plan and whatever your, um, the person is paying you to do these shots according to what they want. But that's one simple way of doing selective adjustments. Now, when I started this, I just used a little lasso tool by print, uh, clicking L on the keyboard. Adobe has some other tools that are built in that'll make this a little bit easier for you. So I'm gonna delete this adjustment again. I'm gonna delete this layer again, and we'll pop into another tool. Under the same selection, you have these little object selections and magic wand and a quick selection tool. And if you, if you click on the uh, selection tool button here in your toolbar, you'll notice the shortcut for W. That's an easy way to do it. Um, keyboard shortcuts are way faster than trying to click around on a menu. I, you got three different options in here, but I usually use the quick selection tool for most of my little tasks because I like that you can resize the cursor to fit whatever it is you're trying to do. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and we're gonna work again on the eye. So let's change this down to a little bit smaller. And instead of just drawing around the eye, the Adobe AI will allow me to just sort of click and drag and it'll try to figure out, well, what is, what is Ant trying to select? And of course, it's selected just a little bit too much. So I can just click the Alt key and you'll notice the plus symbol inside of my cursor will turn to a minus when I hold down the Alt key or Option on the Mac. And you just sort of brush it away to get a much better selection, something like that. It's still not quite perfect, so I'm gonna zoom in some more and I'm gonna push that cursor size down a little bit and I'll just tell it, I wanna get the full iris of the eye like that. That looks good, right? Okay, so now, I don't know if you all noticed it the first time when we did the lasso selection. Um, when we changed the color, it was a really, really sharp edge to that. When you're doing selections, you can keep sharp edges, but I highly recommend changing the feather state on the selection. So you go to your select menu in Photoshop, then you go to modify and go to feather. And what that's going to do is sort of soften the edge of that selection. I tend to do three to five pixels when it's something this small. So we just click OK there. And then if I were to hit, uh, let's see, Q on my keyboard, it'll let me see what the selection's edge looks like with this little mask. So you notice that it's not a hard line around the, the model's eye there. So when we go ahead and do the color adjustment, it's gonna look a little more natural and sort of bleed in and blend in just a little bit better. So now we had the selection, we'll go right back over here and duplicate the layer just like before. So we'll just hit this little plus symbol. Whoops, nope. We'll hit Control J, because that's faster for me. There we go. So now if I take this away, all I should see is that eye color right there, perfect. And then we'll add our hue saturation again, like so. And then we'll clip it like so. And we can adjust again. Let's take this saturation down a little bit. I'm gonna change this color like that. Ever so slightly. And that looks a lot better, but we don't necessarily have to stop right there. We can con continue to add adjustments to this one eye, selective adjustment, just by adding another adjustment layer again, right here. Let's say we wanna do uh, curves, we'll do that. And just like we did with the hue saturation, we're gonna clip it only to the eyeball. Because if I didn't, and I wanted to just push this up, it's gonna brighten everything. We don't wanna do that. I want to put a little bit of a sparkle in her eye. So we're going to add that clip, clipping mask again. We're going to push it up really, really bright like that. And then we're going to use the built-in layer mask. Remember we talked about layer mask, how basically it's just like putting a paper bag over your head and then punching the eye, the eye spots out so you can see through. 
Same concept here. We're going to use that layer mask and we're going to paint in black on the eyes. Let's see. Use our little paintbrush. Paintbrush is set to black. If you look over here, you see that it says black right there. I'm just going to paint in because we want the eye to sparkle a little bit, but we want it to look like the actual natural light that's coming in. And from the looks of it, the light is coming from this direction over here. So we want this side to be a little bit brighter than the other side like that. So we'll just darken it down like so there. Then we'll pop back out. Now look at that. that, that looks way better. So I'm going to put this in a group so you can see a little bit of a before and after like so. So group. All right, so this was the eye before. And now that is after the adjustment. We changed the color. We even gave it a little bit of a sheen and shine to it. And if I feel like adjusting that even more, I can still go back to that curves adjustment layer and pull it down just to touch it, just in case I overdid it. So that looks even more natural like that. So this is without the little extra sheen on her eye like that. And this is giving it a little, more, little bit more life and a little bit more energy, a little bit more mystique, if you will. Much better. And all of that's done just as a selective adjustment. They, they may have been totally fine with the blemishes on her face or her hair or what have you. They just said, hey, I want her eyes to pop a little bit more. Can you make that happen? Yes, I can, sir or ma'am. Give me about 10 minutes in Photoshop and I'll knock this out. Cool. All right. So that is it. Photoshop selective adjustments, use your different selection tools. You can use your different adjustment layers. And I highly recommend using extra layers so you're working non-destructively. You notice in the beginning, I had that bottom main background layer. I still had that there for my own little bit of integrity to keep it safe and sound, just in case I went overboard on the post process and I could always revert back to that original layer. That's the beauty of working non-destructively. All right. Again, let's not forget about this week's photo challenge. Just send them on over to hop at twit.tv or you can tag me on Instagram at ant underscore Pruitt. And we want to focus on the word curious. I didn't want this to be too easy. Mr. Brockman was going to be really tough on you. I wasn't going to be that tough. <laughs> He's wanting you to get down with gravel and macro no we won't do you like that this time we'll give you a couple of weeks for that you but can yeah still folks, use macro on uh, on curious you can you could yeah you could you could still use macro on curious so but that's the challenge for this week folks thank you again so much for joining us thank you for supporting the network supporting the show and supporting all of our sponsors head on over to twit.tv slash hop to check out all of the previous episodes and go back and look through the layer mass discussion, look through the exposure triangle discussion, look through the histogram discussion, because that histogram still confuses quite a lot of people. And hopefully it'll really help you out and get you squared away with getting your shots properly exposed and composed for whatever you have on deck. Now, we can, you can check us out each and every Thursday here. Just hit subscribe uh, in your favorite podcatcher of choice and share it out after you've watched it so more folks can come in and join the community. Speaking of the community, we have a nice online forum that's twit.community where we discuss any and everything, all things twit in there, where there's uh, hands-on photography, Tech News Weekly. All of our shows are in there. All of our hosts are in there. Uh, even Mr. Laporte is in there. He's always talking about something. Heck, it looks like he's the top, one of the top three posts right now. So that's twit.community in your browser. Free to join and sign up and just have fun with all of the different discussions that we have in there. All right, folks, until next time, I will be checking my inbox for your images and I will be checking my Instagram for all of your images too. So. Get on that there, take a shot of curious, create and dominate, and we'll catch you next week. Take care. <laughs>